an awful lot of war games out there. Big strategy smash em ups with a bunch of plastic and a huge map that you get to fight for control of. These games are about chucking dice. They're about big battles. They're about outsmarting your friends and hiding out in Australia for three quarters of the game until everybody forgets you're there and you can take over Asia in one fell swoop. They're usually more about the battles and less about the thinking, the strategy, and the deceit that goes into actual warfare. Spies and Lies takes on a completely different approach and it really makes this game stand out. This is a one-on-one -on -one game about deducing your opponent's intentions while simultaneously obfuscating your own. It's about secret plans and bluffing your way to victory. It's about spying and lying. So let's take a second to talk about what makes this game so clever. This fantastic little board seems like it's where most of the action would take place, but it's actually just the scoreboard. Players will be fighting to push this piece, the double agent, towards their opponent's castle, and your opponent will be working to do the same. It's kind of like a reverse tug of war. You win the game if you can actually get this piece into your opponent's castle. However, if it's just closer to your opponent's side of the board at the end of three rounds, that's also enough to make you the winner. These numbers up the side are called the infiltration tracks, and you get to move up them every time you get infiltration points. Each time you get your infiltration track to 10, you get to move the double agent one space closer to your opponent. There's a few other ways to push the agent forward, but this is the main way, so let's talk about how to score those infiltration points. This unassuming set of cards is where the action of the game really takes place, and it's where things get really interesting. Basically, you and your opponent are going to put down four cards each turn. Let's fast forward this part. Let's fast forward through this. This is going to take forever. Let's fast forward this part. You want to guess as many of your Oh, excuse me. You want to guess as many of your opponent's cards as possible, and they're trying to do the same. Each of these cards has a different ability and can contribute to your victory in a completely unique way. But you're not just picking them based on what they bring to the table, but also what your opponent won't see coming. Because these cards, they only take effect if your opponent fails to guess what card it is. If that troop can slip through the enemy lines, as it were. It's not just a blind guess either. You have a few different clues to work with. First of all, these cards are labeled 1 to 10 in the top left, and they all have different abilities and score slightly differently, but they do have to be played in numerical order. For the most part. This makes a big difference since you guess these cards one at a time. If you start with a 4 or a 5 as your first card, it's really going to limit the other cards you can choose for the rest of the round and make it easier for your opponent to guess what you're trying to do. Now, there is one special card, number 4, the Sergeant. Sarge here can actually go anywhere in the lineup, even out of order, which gives you a lot of wiggle room in how you lay out your soldier cards. Then there's the intelligence card. Every round you draw one of these bad boys, and if any of the numbers on this card match any of the numbers of the cards you put down, you put a special token on them without telling your opponent specifically which cards they are. This can give the opponent a lot of information, so luckily that tricky sergeant card we discussed earlier can give a false positive on this step, putting down a token when it shouldn't necessarily get one. Additionally, on rounds 2 and 3, you have to exhaust one of the cards you used in the previous round. This card is placed face up next to the board, which severely limits your ability to strategize and surprise your opponent, and takes away one-tenth of your options. Finally, there's one other important clue to figuring out which cards your opponent has put down. Trying to figure out their strategy. Some of these cards are extremely powerful, and they combo off of each other extremely well. So is it best to take the bold play, or the unexpected one your opponent won't see coming? Since your soldier cards are played in order, it's a lot easier to sneak one in at the start of the round than it is at the end. And as a result, the higher numbered cards tend to be a lot more powerful, because they're harder to get away with. The biggest card in the game is number 10, the Marshal, which can give a staggering 10 infiltration points, which is really great, but it's completely countered by card number 1, the Spy, which will automatically cancel out your opponent's Marshal when it's revealed. At number 9, the General lets a player move the Secret Agent twice, which is basically worth 20 infiltration points. You cannot afford to let your opponent get this guy through, but does that mean you'll give up a more likely guess just to block your opponent from using this card, freeing them up to let the Marshal through? 
Will you use the sergeant who can be placed anywhere to hide these cards a little better? Or is it better to get a bunch of smaller, trickier cards through than spending your turn on a big, risky general or marshal play? Most of the other cards are pretty standard, giving you points or some other basic ability, but I think it's worth mentioning that one of these cards is just a straight up bomb, and it's actually one of my favorites. The groans you get out of people when they flip this card over is just, it's incredible. All it does is cancel out your opponent's next card, but if you guess that card as well, then your opponent loses two of their cards for the next round instead of just the one they would normally. It's devastating, it's thematic, and I absolutely love it. Of course, to keep things fair, the Miner at number 3 is able to automatically cancel out the bomb when it's revealed, giving this cat and mouse game yet another layer of strategy. It's worth noting that Spies and Lies is an adaptation of the classic two-player game Stratego, which was absolutely one of my favorites growing up. If you're familiar with Stratego, you know it's about guessing which pieces your opponent has hidden on their side of the board and sending the right pieces in to engage them. Trying to hunt down their commanders with your best pieces while avoiding the traps and mines that they've laid for you along the way. It's a fantastic head-to-head -head logic game, but it takes about an hour to play and it's a lot slower. There's a lot more pieces on the board, the setup takes forever, and that's when you're going to make most of the important strategy decisions for the rest of the game. Spies and Lies really captures the essence of Stratego by making it a game about outwitting your opponents, guessing what they have hidden, and that amazing feeling that comes from just completely baffling your opponent. Plus it's faster, easier, and more compact, so I really have to salute Jumbo Games for making such an amazing adaptation of such a classic well-known game. Overall, Spies and Lies is a big thumbs up for me, and it's a great addition to any board game shelf, but I would especially recommend it to board gaming couples, anybody who likes tricky logic-based deduction puzzles, uh, anybody who likes reverse psychology, and anybody who appreciated the original Stratego. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Because games matter.